Hey everyone and welcome to our training on how to volunteer in a virtual text bank. My name is Geordie Barry and I work in the digital department for NVDEMS and today I'm joined by Jake Feynman, our regional field director in Northern Nevada. So thank you so much Jake for joining us. Thanks for having me. Uh, so uh, today we're going to talk about uh, a couple of things. First of all, we're going to talk about Hustle. Uh, Hustle is our uh, texting client uh, that we use to reach out to uh, volunteers and voters over text. Uh, we're going to talk about how to onboard to Hustle, so how to get you all uh, involved with your own Hustle accounts. We're going to talk about exactly how a virtual text bank works, uh, the kind of event that we do where we systematically reach out to people via text, and especially how we do that uh, from uh, over Zoom and from our own homes. We're going to talk about texting workflows, so exactly what it looks like when you open up Hustle and reach out to people. And we're also going to talk about a couple of best practices when you're talking to people through text as well. So what is Hustle? Well, thanks for asking. Hustle is a peer-to-peer -peer texting tool that will enable us to have hundreds or even thousands of personalized one-to-one -one conversations with Nevadans. So texting is a really important tool that we have in order to reach out to people, both volunteers and to voters. It's going to help us recruit them, and it's one of the ways that we have of reaching out to people besides like phone calls or in-person conversations. And the reason that we would do texting over those other options is because it's quick and it's easy and it has a high open end response rate. It's really important in order for us to mobilize all the people that we need to mobilize in order to win elections to reach all of these people where they are. And some people are going to be best reached through a phone call, uh, but some people are going to be best reached through a text. Uh, because, you know, I think we can all agree, uh, you are, people are much more likely to read a text than they are to pick up a phone call from someone they don't know. So, uh, now we're going to talk about some hustle vocabulary, just that we're all on the same page uh, when we talk about uh, the jargon as we move through this presentation. So an agent is the person sending text, so that's you and I. Uh, a workflow is a list of contacts that you'll text through. So when you sit down uh, to work through hustle to text a bunch of people, uh, you'll have a big list of uh, people that you'll want to uh, reach out to that we've planned ahead of time, and that's going to be called the workflow when you open Hustle up. Uh, script, these are pre-written messages for you to send. It's a lot like a script when you do a phone bank. Uh, it's just a, a pre-written, pre-built-in piece of text that you're going to send out to everyone to start all of your conversations. Uh, and lastly, a tag. So this is a way that we're going to note specific information about people such as volunteer yes, or they're interested in volunteering, or volunteer no. And we'll talk a little bit more about that uh, as we move through the presentation, about exactly what that is and why we use it. Uh, so now we're going to talk about uh, getting onboarded to Hustle. How can you get set up with your own Hustle account? Uh, so first of all, uh, you'll need to reach out to your organizer, and they will have to add you to Hustle on our end. Uh, so once you've set that up with your organizer, um, you'll get a text message invitation to create an account. And in that text message, there'll be a link that you click on. That'll take you to a page where you can create an account using your own email and, and a secure password that you come up with yourself. Once you've created that account, uh, you can access Hustle online through a web browser. So you'll go to your web browser and you'll type web.hustle.life. So now that we know how to get onboarded to Hustle, how does a virtual text bank actually work? So the very first thing that you're going to need to do is visit nvdems.com slash events. It's going to redirect you to our NVDEMS Mobilize page, which is our event management tool. From there, you're going to search for a virtual text bank event and then click on it. It will prompt you to put in your first and last name, email address, phone number and zip code. You'll then click on the time that you wish to participate and press sign up. Once you've signed up, an email is going to be sent to you with the Zoom webinar link. So go ahead and click on this email and you'll see the Zoom link as well as all of the details of your event. Go ahead and click on the Zoom link a few minutes before your virtual text bank shift. On this Zoom call, your field organizer is going to go through a couple of things with you, including how to use Hustle so that everyone is on the same page. They'll go through the list of people that you're texting. So what is this group of people? What do they look like? What are the goals of these conversations? We'll go over some best practices and answer any questions that you may have. 
Before hopping off, you'll go to web.hustle.life. You'll log into your account and make sure that your workflow is showing up. You'll then begin texting. So now let's go over what the texting workflows look like. So to begin texting a new workflow, you're going to click begin sending messages, as you can see on your screen. When people begin replying to your text messages, you're going to see a section that says begin sending replies so that you can reply to people. An important thing to note is that you can have people working on multiple lists at a time. So let's say for instance, you're texting a list that is volunteer recruitment oriented, and you're also texting a list about voter registration reminders. You can text both of those groups independently and they will both show up in your dashboard. Once you've clicked on your workflow, you're going to see the very first person's name at the top and a message or script at the bottom of the screen. Right next to the script, you'll see a send button. You'll keep clicking send until you've texted through all of your assigned contacts. An important thing to note is that once you've texted 25 contacts, it's going to ask you to confirm that you want to keep sending more text messages. If someone tells you that you've got the wrong number, if they're hostile, or they request to be taken off the list, please opt them out. If people ask you to be taken off the list, you're legally obligated to remove them from our texting list. But before you hit opt out, make sure that you respond to them and let them know that you're taking them off the list. Because once you hit opt out, we will no longer be able to text this person. So to do so, right under their name, you'll click Show Profile. It's then going to populate a section on the right-hand side that has their name again, and you'll click Opt Out. I'm now going to pass it back over to Jake, who's going to go over tagging. Great. Thanks, Jordy. Uh, so when someone gives you information uh, that, fits a, uh, that fits a certain criterion, uh, what we want you to do is to mark what's called a tag. Uh, so you can see here from this page, uh, when you have the show profile open, just like you would do if you were going to opt out, over here on the right is this little drop down menu uh, that has different pieces of information uh, that you'll want to assign to people based on what your conversations are looking like. Uh, and the reason that we do this uh, is this sends information back to us so that the next time that we pull a list, uh, we have more information that we can use. So if someone, for example, tells you that yes, they're interested in volunteering, you're going to want to tag that with a volunteer yes tag. And then maybe next time uh, when we're building perhaps for an event, we're going to want to pull a list of only people that have told us they're interested in volunteering. Uh, but we won't know that unless uh, you, the texter, manually puts the tag onto this conversation. Uh, there's also a couple of other pieces inf of information that we can use as well. So. Um, Here's a drop down that shows some of the tags that you might use. Uh, volunteer yes, we spoke about. Uh, volunteer no. Uh, so if someone's not interested in volunteering, uh, you can tag that and we'll know not to bring them onto lists in the future. Uh, you can also tag other things like if it's a wrong number, we'll know to take that number out of our rotation. Uh, if someone has moved out of Nevada, uh, we'll know that they're probably not interested in volunteering with Nevada. Uh, we'll stop telling them to do it. And also, if someone's a Spanish speaker, we can put them onto a different list. Um, we might want to reach out uh, and do a uh, Spanish speaking only text bank, for example. Uh, so it's really important that we like collect as much information as possible uh, so that every time that we uh, do a new text bank, every time we reach out to a new group of people, uh, we can target more specifically and more effectively and make sure that those people uh, are being reached uh, efficiently. Uh, and then uh, how to reply to someone. So uh, if someone does text you back, uh, you can go to that conversation. Uh, and we actually do have some canned responses already. So the most frequent question that you ask, uh, almost always the question that the script is going to say is, are you interested in volunteering? Uh, so if someone says yes, they are interested in volunteering, you can press this yes response, and it will auto fill in uh, something that we've already written that's going to apply to most people. So you can, of course, go back and edit this once you've clicked yes. Uh, you do want to make sure that the text is as personal as possible. Uh, but we've given you something to work with, uh, which most of your conversations are going to look like. Uh, and we also do have an automatic no response. Uh, so if someone tells you no, they're not interested in volunteering, you can click that in. 
and you want to use that because uh, you know we want to respect what people are telling us, uh, but we also want to be polite. Uh, and we do, uh, so you should definitely make sure that you are responsive. Uh, if someone is asking you a question, you should make sure to make clear what it is. And of course, we encourage you to personalize your message. Uh, that's why we have uh, you know, people sending this out and not robots. Uh, a personal conversation that you have with someone, uh, whether that's over text or phone or at the door, is always going to be a better way to get them involved uh, and make them engage with Democrats. So um, a couple of best practices, uh, some good strategies and tactics that you should always be aware of. First of all, always reply. Uh, so I would, uh, first of all, uh, you should reply even if someone is telling you that they're not interested in volunteering. It's always a good idea to respond politely. And we want to make sure that even if someone doesn't end up volunteering with our organization, they leave every interaction they have with the Democrats with a good taste in their mouth. So they feel good about coming back and voting for us uh, in November. And uh, this one seems a little bit obvious too, uh, but you should also always reply if they respond positively. So we want to make, that's the whole point of reaching out to people. If they do get back to you, they're interested in volunteering, or even if they just have some questions they want to know more answers to, you should always reply, try to answer those questions and make people get excited and engaged and uh, recruit them to come out to our next event as well. You should be yourself, let your personality shine through. Like I said, these are people doing these texts. We want to take full advantage of that. Uh, the best way to get people engaged is to have that personalized conversation with them. So you should make sure that you are responding to people authentically. And of course, you're going to want to be professional when talking with people as well. This is, you know, a good general rule every time you're reaching out to someone, but it's important to remember that you are a representative of the Democratic Party when you're doing these texts. So not only do you want to be polite for its own sake, uh, but also because you don't want to uh, say something you don't mean, it can get screenshotted and taken out of context. And of course, like I mentioned earlier, uh, you always want to mark tags and opt-outs. The reason for that, this just allows us to uh, get a clearer picture of what happened. Both tags and opt-outs uh, communicate back to us here at the state party uh, what your conversations look like. And that allows us to get a bird's eye view the next time we're planning out new conversations. Uh, we need that information from the tags and the opt-outs so we know um, who to uh, reach out to in the future uh, and who to leave alone. And of course, just as a reminder, the way to access Hustle through an internet browser is the website web.hustle.life. Thank you so much, Sheikh, for joining us for our How to Volunteer in a Virtual Text Bank training. And thank you to all of you that are watching. We hope that you'll continue to stay involved with NVDEMS. Please sign up for an event with us at nvdems.com slash events. You can connect with us on Facebook in our Facebook group, Twitter, and Instagram. And for more trainings, please visit nvdems.com slash training hyphen Nevada.